Good morning. We welcome you to Our Lady of Victory Cathedral. Today is the Sunday of Divine Mercy. Please stand and sing with us. We come to you as we welcome our celebrant. By your body and blood, by your life and your love, renew us. May your sacrifice be forgiveness in me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on this Divine Mercy Sunday, we join our children as they give thanks to God 
for inviting them to the Eucharistic table. Trusting in the divine mercy of the risen Lord, let us humbly turn to him and ask for his mercy and forgiveness for all our shortcomings. I confess to the Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, are greatly saved in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, 
by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet, more than ever, believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus, they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. The Word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. And let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard-pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord. He has been my Savior, the joyful shout of victory in the tent of the just. Thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos, because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, wearing an ankle-length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, 
I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but I, now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. The Word of the Lord. Says the Lord, blessed are they who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, when his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them, Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my side, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name the Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the first reading this morning states that there is something that can be seen and verified. And what is this? 
It is the life of the Christian community born from the faith in the risen Lord. It is these communities of people leading completely new life that testify that Jesus is alive and has sent his spirit in the world. The second reading today from the book of Revelation invites us to examine the situations of our communities to see if they really place the risen Lord at the center of their lives. And the gospel reading tells us that our faith is not founded on scientific proof, but on listening every Sunday to the word of the risen one who is present among us as a community and who speaks to us. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in the first part of the gospel reading, we listened to the story about the first appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ to the apostles. This took place the very evening that the Lord rose from the dead. It was the first day of the week. It is important for us to notice on which day of the week that these events were instituted by the Lord in order to understand how the early church replaced the Jewish Sabbath with a Sunday which they called the Day of the Lord. For fear of the Jews, the disciples had locked themselves up in the upper room. Jesus appeared in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. By these words, my dear brothers and sisters, our Lord officially commissioned his church through the apostles to continue the divine work of salvation which he had begun and which he had brought to completion in his death and resurrection. Breathing on them and giving them the Holy Spirit to forgive sins, Jesus also instituted the sacrament of penance in which the sins that alienate us from the love and mercy of God are forgiven, and once more we are reconciled to God. The second part of the gospel deals with the doubts that the disciples had about the resurrection. Though here particularly Thomas and his doubts are mentioned, it is about the doubts of all the disciples. It is about our doubts and our faith in the risen Lord. We must also remember that during their two or three years with the Lord Jesus, the disciples saw nothing in him but a mere man with divine powers. And certain prophets of the old covenant also had the same divine powers from the Lord. Christ had emptied himself of his divine nature, and he had foretold his resurrection after his death many times to his disciples. But that he could be really God as well as man was something that the disciples could not grasp. And if he was a mere man, death had to be the end of his life. It was after he had appeared to them and I showed them his hands and his side that they slowly began to believe in the resurrection. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it may surprise and amaze us that the disciples were reluctant to believe in the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. They were reluctant to believe in the resurrection of the Lord. 
It's a surprise that the disciples, after seeing all the wonderful things that Jesus had done, could not come to believe that he could also rise from the dead. But are we better than who they were now in our faith as disciples of Jesus? Are we better than the disciples in their faith in the risen Lord? There are times that we also have our doubts about the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ in our lives, especially when things are not moving on well with us in our life, when we have prayed fervently for a miracle to happen or for a healing, but we have not received any of these. The story that John presents to us today is that the risen Lord lives a life that escapes our senses, a life that cannot be touched by hands or seen by eyes, a life that is completely different from the life of this world. It can be only an object of faith. We can only see the risen Lord through the eyes of faith. Today, Jesus exclaims, blessed are those who have not seen but believed. One who sees has certainty, not faith. He has the proof of a fact that cannot be refuted. St. John concludes his gospel by saying that he wrote this to help us to believe and that believing we may have life through his name. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord lives amongst us and he is present to each and every one of us. We can really see the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ in our life through faith. And so guided by the gospel, let us always strive to be a little more like the early Christians. Jesus commissions us all today to be his witnesses in the world. He commissions us and he sends us today in his words as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Let us preach Christ, the risen Lord, by the examples of our devout and sincere Christian way of living. And guided by the gospel, let us have the courage to stand firm for our faith and defend it always, even if this should costs our earthly lives. Thousands of many martyrs are in heaven because they just did that. They died for their faith in the risen Lord. We can also learn from them. My dear little children, today you will meet the Lord in the Holy Eucharist. The Lord himself has invited you here to share in the Eucharistic banquet. It is the beginning of your serious life with the Lord. I pray for you, and I pray that your parents and your teachers will continue to guide you to always work closely with the Lord so that your life will be his life and his grace will be sufficient for you even in your weaknesses. I congratulate you all, and I pray that you will grow up to become faithful Christians.
Let us now profess our faith in God who calls us today to be witnesses of the gospel. I believe in one God. Let us bring our prayers before our loving Father, for we believe that his Son is risen to save the world. For the Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for all bishops, that God will give them the grace and wisdom to touch the lives and hearts of many during this year of faith, we pray to the Lord. For peace among all the nations of the world and for an end to violence, we pray to the Lord. For those who are struggling to believe and for those who have lost hope as well as faith, we pray to the Lord. For all the newly initiated members of the church, that their new faith may inspire the rest of us to renew our own faith, we pray to the Lord. For our community of faith, that this Easter season we may be a sign of the risen Christ in the greater community around us, we pray to the Lord. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. O oh God of divine mercy and reconciliation, hear these our prayers and grant them according to your will. For we ask them through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please join us in singing Sanctuary, which can be found on your song sheet. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. Lord, breathe. 
prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. Thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lead me on, Lord, from Purify me from within, fill my heart with your Holy Spirit. Take away. sin. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. Thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands to become our spiritual drink. Pray now, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to love you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. 
and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy this gift we have brought to you for consecration, that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said a blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ascended, he took the chalice. And giving thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. 
May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the other of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Our communion song may be found on your song sheet, Remembrance. mystery say take this bread take this wine now the simple may divine for any to receive by your mercy we come to your table by your grace you are making us faithful lord we remember you and remembrance leads us to worship and as we worship you our worship communion we respond to your invitation we remember you see his body his blood know that he has overcome Every trial we will face None too lost to be saved None too broken or ashamed All are welcomed in this place By your mercy we come to your table By your grace you are made us faithful Lord we remember you and remembrance leads us to worship and as we worship you our worship leads to communion we respond to your invitation. We remember you. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come. And as we worship you, our worship leads to communion. We respond to your invitation. We respond to your invitation. We remember you. Oh, how could it be 
that my God would welcome me into this mystery. Say, take this bread, take this wine, now the simple may divine for any to receive. By your mercy we come to your table. By your grace you are making us faithful. Lord, we remember you, and remembrance leads us to worship, and as we worship you, our worship leads to communion. We respond to your invitation. We respond to your invitation. We remember you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, amazing love, now flowing down from heaven. Grace flows down and covers me. Amazing grace, how sweet the
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends, let us all clap our hands for our little children who have received their first Holy Communion. Let us all go forth to witness to the risen Lord. The Mass is ended. Him, Jesus Messiah. He became sin, who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. Messiah 